this is the story of one of the greatest fighters the world has ever seen. For 12 years, this powerful right and left combination crushed challengers like no other heavyweight champion in boxing's history. As time goes on, many will claim to be the greatest heavyweights of all time. Yet no one will ever command the worship of a race and an entire country like the man they used to call the Brown Bomber. This is the story of one of boxing's best, Joe Lewis. building that you're looking at behind us is Joe Lewis Arena here in Detroit, Michigan. It was named after one of this city's favorite sons. He was the heavyweight boxing champion of the world for no less than 12 years. His name was Joseph Lewis Barrow. You know, life was never easy for Joe Lewis, even when he was heavyweight boxing champion of the world. He was born in Alabama, but he came north here to Detroit in 1926 with his mother, his stepfather, and seven brothers and sisters. Joe's real father, Monroe Barrow, was confined to the Searcy Hospital for the Negro Insane in Mount Vernon, Alabama. That happened when Joe Lewis was just two years old. He started fighting at Brewster's Gym here in Detroit, a place that we're going to be visiting a little bit later for a fellow by the name of Atler Ellis. Billy Kahn, you were the light heavyweight champion of the world. You climbed into the ring with Joe Lewis on no less than two occasions, but I'll bet you would have loved to have had him in his very first fight as an amateur. Yeah, I heard he was knocked down seven times. He was, in fact, but he said he had an excuse. He ate a dozen bananas before the fight, and that slowed him down. Well, it takes a good man to get up seven times. Well, that's what Atler Ellis said. You had to have the feeling that Atler Ellis kind of had a premonition of what he might have had in terms of a prospect with Joe Lewis. John Roxborough was a fellow that Joe Lewis got involved with as a manager, rather an unsavory type, but then a lot of fighters got involved with that type at that time. He was a numbers guy. Joe then turned professional, and Billy Kahn, he had a very good professional career. You saw him early on, and you knew right then he was really a comer. Well, the first time I saw Joe Lewis, I was about 16 years old. And I had a job putting a rosin box in his corner. And he fought Hans Berkey 10 rounds in Duke King Garden, and he knocked him out. I knew Joe was going to be good then. That brings us to February 21st, 1935. This was a rematch of a fight that Joe Lewis had with Lee Ramage. Earlier, in December of 1934, he had knocked Ramage out in just three rounds. This one was for the money. As Joe Lewis went west to face Lee Ramage in Ramage's hometown of L.A., it would be the first Lewis fight to be seen on film. The pictures would begin to tell a familiar story. Lewis is wearing the dark trunks with white stripe. Lee Ramage in the all dark trunks. A crashing right by Lewis and Ramage goes down. The ring wise Ramage takes a count of nine. Lewis moves in, looking for a quick knockout here in round two. This is the third bout this year for the young Brown Bomber. Joe has won all 14 of his fights since turning professional just 10 months ago. 11 of those 14 wins were clean knockouts. Joe Lewis, as you can see, was all business. There was a no-nonsense attitude at all times in the ring. No wasted effort. A tremendous left hook by Lewis, and Ramage goes down. Lewis with a barrage of combinations. Settles the issue, it's all over. Joe Lewis scores a devastating second round knockout over young Lee Ramage. I'm satisfied you're going to be the next heavyweight champion of the world. I hope so. Well, Joe, as your manager, I'm going to do everything possible to get you a chance to fight for the championship. Thank you. Seven months later, Joe Lewis married Marva Trotta at 7.45 p.m. on September 24, 1935 in Harlem. At 8 o'clock, he was on his way to Yankee Stadium to take on Max Bear. Joe tries to hold on, but Maxie bores in. Now Lewis starts throwing leather himself. Now it's Bear who's in trouble. Bear is 
trying to cover up. Joe's looking for a spot to hit for a quick knockout. Bear still caught in that corner. He's got his left on Joe's head, trying to hold him off. By the third round, Lewis has the fight completely in control. And though Bear is always dangerous, Lewis is out timing him. The ground bombers got Bear by the ropes again. A straight right, and Maxi crumbles to the canvas. Bear is trying to beat Lewis so he can get a rematch with Jim Bratta. The man he lost his title to only three months before. But as Maxi gets off the canvas to face a devastating Joe Lewis, his chances don't look too good. Bear is very tough, but Lewis lands three left hooks that throw Max again. Once again, Bear is saved by the bell. In the fourth round, it seems only a matter of time before Joe brings the fight to a close. Bear tries to stay close quarters, but Lewis pushes him away. Watch the delayed effect of Joe's falling right. Maxi slumps to the canvas, and although he gets to one knee, he's not able to reach his feet. Joe Lewis was now more than a prospect. He was a contender. Max Bear, knocked out in four rounds, had trouble envisioning Lewis as a potential champion. It was a hard fight. I was up against a very good man, and a man will go a long way. I wish him a lot of luck and happiness in his marriage. Now, a little turkey talk. You know, a lot of them are saying that you might have got up on that last knockdown. Could you have, Max? Well, I'll tell you, I, in a way, I knew what was going on around me. And, of course, my legs were something wrong with my legs. I couldn't get up. And not only that, I saw more than one Joe Lewis in that ring. It looked like whole Harlem was there. <laughs> and this little ray of sh uh, sunshine, you know, he couldn't go through those clouds. Too many dark ones. <laughs> you are a happy man today, aren't you? Yeah, I'm very happy. <laughs> uh, doubly happy. Yeah, that's what makes you more happy, to be bare or to be married to this charming lady? I think to be married. <laughs> <laughs> was it a tough fight, uh, Mr. Lewis? Yeah, it was a tough fight, but I think I have a tough fight home every night. <laughs> <laughs> now, tell us about your plans, Mr. Lewis, for the future. Oh, it ain't no plan, but that thing me, I'm going to stay boss. <laughs> <laughs> Who would you rather fight, Joe, Braddock or Smelling? Right on. You think Braddock will be easier? Yeah, much easier in the championship, too. Oh, that makes a difference. Yeah, that makes a lot you of difference. You think Braddock will be harder than Bear? Uh, no. Can't be much harder than Bear. Mrs. Lewis, what did you think of your husband? I thought he was grand. Well, you didn't expect him to lose, did you? No. You knew it was all, all the time. How about a nice big kiss and finish it? Yeah. That won't happen. <laughs> Joe decided to take on Max Schmeling first, with demonstrations by Jewish organizations claiming Schmeling represented Nazi Germany. An overconfident and underway Joe Lewis entered the ring. A ripping right by Max Schmeling. Lewis is in trouble. Another dynamite right. Lewis goes down. The referee, Arthur Donovan, signals Max to go to a neutral corner. Joe's up on his feet, but it's all Max here in round four. Max kept pouring it on for the next eight rounds, and Joe was in trouble throughout. Joe is still on his feet here in the 12th round, but Max is all over the brown bomber. A ripping right to the jaw by Max Malin. Crushing punches by Max. Joe is in desperate trouble here in the 12th. A dynamite right and Lewis goes down. Max Schmeling puts a temporary halt to the meteoric rise of the Brown Bomber Joe Lewis. So the almighty Joe Lewis was stopped. Maybe it was a relaxed training camp. No one knew the reason. Joe Lewis was not one for excuses. He would explain himself in the ring. So Joe Lewis marched on. Ex-champion Jack Sharkey came out of retirement, exclaiming the 12-year age difference between him and the young Lewis meant nothing. He said he could whip any black fighter. Jack Sharkey was mistaken. Lewis in the dog trunks with white stripe. Former champion Jack Sharkey wearing the all-dog trunks. 
This is Joe's first fight since suffering his only loss just eight weeks ago. That loss is indelible in his mind, a humiliating knockout of the hands of former world heavyweight champion Max Schmeling. Lewis shoots a right and Shark is down. He is hurt. Lewis intent on getting back on the winning side. He's up against the tough Jack Sharkey here in round two. Sharkey is in trouble. Sharkey tries to tie Lewis up. Another barrage of punches and Sharkey goes down again. The Brown Bomber comes out for round three very confident. As a professional, Joe has had 28 fights, winning 27, 23 by knockouts. Blistering punches by Joe Lewis. Lethal left jab and hooks and right to the body. A right and Sharkey goes down. Devastating combination punches tell the story. Can Sharkey weather this storm? He's up with a count of six. Lewis goes back to work, measuring his man, heading to the body and head. A tremendous left hook, and Sharkey goes down again. A clean knockout by the great Joe Lewis.